586 BC, we have the destruction to Jerusalem by uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the great Babylonian exile. The heart of the Jew is crying to come back to the land of promise by the river of Babylon where we sat down and wept as we remember Zion. They call it the great exile. It says this great exile was not extremely long because only a few years later the Babylonian dynasty and the Babylonian empire started sinking and a new power came up in the east. This was the Persians led by Cyrus. Cyrus actually favored the Jewish people. He thought that they were pretty cool and he started giving them good positions in work and all that and eventually he even let them come back to the land led by Israel and Nehemiah and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. I call it the first, second temple. It's a funny term. I decided it's appropriate. I will elaborate when I get to Jerusalem. They built a little simpler temple but still Worship was restored, the sacrifice was restored, the high priest office was restored. And when you have that, when everything is good and you're starting to be strong, you get uh, commercial. Too much was going on there, and while was too much was going on and everything was easy, some people decided they are unique, they are the chosen ones. One guy, I don't know if he was self-declared or was head followers, and he considered himself, himself the righteous priest and put together this group of people that called themselves the Yachad, the Togetherness Group, or we call them the Essenes. They left commercial Jerusalem and went down to a desert area right by the Dead Sea. 2,000 years ago, there was no air conditioning. And this here, this is a very, very cold day in this area. I mean, in the summer, spring, and fall, I mean, it's well under, over 100, 110 degrees in this area. Great oppressive heat on daily basis. But they didn't care. They wanted to go away from commercial, and they wanted to live in a place that will provide for them an atmosphere and absolute holiness. In order to survive here, you need water. There's not much fresh water. There is the Dead Sea. You cannot do much with that. So in order to get some water, they wait for those flash floods. Now we either missed one or we are just going to have one soon in the next days if the rain will continue. Because the rain does not come here, it goes up on the higher levels, closer to Jerusalem. But because most of this territory of the Judean desert is not very porous, when you have the rain it will collect from the smaller ravine to another one to another one, then ends up in the bigger ones and will come over the biggest ones as great flash floods that will come down the side of the hill for a day or two or for just hours. The Essenes went around and built a simple little aqueduct. You can see it on the side of the road, two lines of stones, and that would lead the water up to this area where they have dug many top of the ground cisterns to collect the water. Now because their intention by coming out here was to be able to live a very very holy life one of the symbol of getting in from the daily to the holiness in the Jewish tradition is to purify yourself. Baptism, or mikveh as we call it. To do that you have to have the appropriate bathing pools and they went around the next to just about every cistern here. We actually found the ritual baths, the stairs leading down and stairs leading up, the separation, so you come, you go down, you cleanse yourself. It's not a complete cleansing because there is one contamination or uncleanliness that cannot be dealt with with water for that you need the hazing of the ashes of the red heifer so that is not a full but this is as close as they could get to being pure and after doing that you can go to prayer and you can go to holy work like writing the scrolls and stuff like that and they came here and as it was a community of about 200 men that lived here over five generations now, how do 200 men multiply? That's a big enigma. <laughs> but possibly it was not by birth. People came and added, you know, joined the group. They were trained and they were put, you know, if they were proved to be faithful to the cause, they would be staying here and trained in writing the scrolls and studying the things or other services that were pertaining to the life here in this community. Then Star Wars came. <laughs> what is this all about? Hello? Anyhow, they succeeded to have five generations, 200 men at a time, all together over a period of about a hun couple hundred years, there were about a thousand men. We know that because of the excavations, we unraveled a graveyard of a thousand tombs, all male, 
and they were laying there. Hmm. And they were doing their thing here, writing a lot of scrolls, and they were accomplished to write, they, they succeeded to write every single scroll of the Bible and many other scrolls that pertain to worship of the temple and to their own beliefs. Then came the Romans, ending up the Jewish Empire here at about 66 BC, as said. And they still were living here and doing their thing, but at the, somewhere around the early 60s of the first centuries, century, the Romans started putting all kinds of decrees that made the life of the Jews very difficult, and the Jews decided to revolt against the Rome in Jerusalem, called the Great Revolt. For a couple of years it went out pretty strongly. They actually had some advancements and so on. How do we know all those? Most of the information we get is either from the writings of Josephus Plavius, which was a Jewish guy, a historian, but he was working for the Romans, so he, and he was also a little bit romantic in his writing and sometimes exaggerated numbers, but he told a lot of the story and we don't have any other written material. Other than that, the excavations, now, just to know, like, how do you know when the revolt was greater and when, when it was less great? I wear today a coin from the second year of the revolt. This coin, such coins were found on Masada, for example. This is the second year. From the second year, the pennies, we found quite a few of those. And even the shekels, the silver ones, we found quite a few of those. That means when they strike a lot of coins and use them, that's revolt coin. It's illegal currency to show we are using those because we have our own independence. We find them and it's a great testimony of what the Jews were able to do it. So we found from the second year, we found from the third year, less from the fourth year, from the fifth year of the revolt and the final year of the revolt, we found until today only eight pieces of silver shekels, which means that their price is in the hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars per coin. That's nothing to do with that, but they were pretty strong for a while and then they started losing, they were not united. They were following different rabbi courts. One was Jokanan battalion, one was from another guy's battalion. And they were struggling between their little religious convictions and could not face against this powerful Roman offensor. Eventually, in the year 70, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed completely. Titus was out of the picture, but the general, local general Silva of the 10th Legion was very determined not to leave any root of any sprout of Jewish independence that they might not revolt against him again. So he sent his warriors from town to town, from city to city, from village to village, when they just killed, raped, destroyed and burnt everything that was Jewish, even in caves out in the desert. The people of Qumran started seeing this coming and they thought eventually they will reach here. And they knew they are not a worrying people. So they decided we are not going to wait here until they come and destroy all of our holy manuscripts that we have worked so many years to write. But what we are going to do, they commissioned the local potter. He is going to be baking for them or making for them elongated pots in, po uh, in uh, clay. And in those they put all of their scrolls and started hiding them in many caves. We found 12 such caves on the sides of the cliff. You see one up here smaller caves down below and further down that direction and they put those they were hoping that those will not be found and uh